Good afternoon, YouTube. This is Scott Anthony for Monday, May 6th. Um, I'm going to do a brief video, and by brief I mean extremely brief. Um, a bombshell is about to be dropped here by Marie Harf, spokesperson for the Department of State, and when she speaks, she speaks for Secretary Kerry, who in turn speaks for President Obama and the administration. So what she says here is extremely important for a lot of reasons. So far this video has only been on the State Department website. I don't believe it's been uploaded to YouTube yet and therefore most people probably don't know it exists yet. Um, but I just want to show you it's in the very first few minutes of this press briefing on May 5th and it's critical because a few um, things are established here. First is the um, the issue of precedence and then the issue of judicial estoppel. So these are two terms uh, to become familiar with quickly because both come into play here. I'm also going to urge everybody to grab this video, rip it, flip it. I'll try and remix it, uh, set the remix button if I can because it's important. Um, some historical background, uh, why we're seeing what we're seeing is important is because recently, in the past month or so, it's been said several times by the State Department that journalists are not protected from prosecution. And this is huge because the State Department recently has been doing a series of, you know, free speech and, such, and various PowerPoint presentations at the beginning of these meetings. And yet, all the journalists present, uh, like Matt Lee from the AP, etc., have been questioning whether or not they can be legally held um, responsible under for, for prosecution for not revealing sources, etc. And the State Department is not exactly backing our journalists up here. So when this bombshell gets dropped, you're going to notice something very interesting. And I'll get to that in one second. So why don't we start with Matt Lee, who opens up the questioning. Matt? Kick us off on this Monday. Okay, I will. I want to get back to Syria, but I want to ask you about um, some unfinished business from last week as well as some new stuff today about Benghazi. Okay. Um, one, on the subpoena that, uh -huh. um, that Congressman Issa has um, uh, sent to Secretary Kerry on Friday mm -hmm. when we were talking, he had not yet, I wasn't yet aware of it or we weren't sure if he was aware of it or not. Is he now, and if he is, what does he think of it? Uh, he is aware. He has been made aware, as, as I noted, he is in a, just finishing up a trip to the African continent. He is aware. Um, he, uh, as we've said repeatedly, uh, we were all surprised, quite frankly, that instead of uh, working with us and reaching out to us and offering first an invitation to testify, that uh, uh, Chairman Issa jumped immediately to subpoenaing the secretary. A couple more points. He does still plan to be in Mexico on the 21st. We've had that travel planned, as I said, on Friday. And I would, again, we talked a little bit about this on Friday, but I'm just going to read a little bit of a quote uh, for you from House of Republican Leader John Boehner. This is a quote from 2007 about a previous attempt to subpoena a Secretary of State. This was a subpoena to get uh, information about pre-war intelligence in Iraq. You'll remember, I think, 4,500 Americans died in Iraq. This is the quote from John Boehner. Let me just read a little bit for you. Quote, this partisan show trial is a waste of time and taxpayer dollars. By subpoena in the Secretary of State, Democrats have revealed how beholden they are to left-wing activist groups while stealing the Secretary's time away from critical diplomatic missions. It goes on, but... Okay, I'm going to pause it right there, because what Marie Harf is doing is attempting to set precedent. And precedent is basically establishing a usage, tradition, or standard to be followed in the future. That's what she's trying to do by using the words of, uh, of Bain, John Boehner um, when he subpoenaed Secretary of State uh, back in the Iraq War. Fast forward to 2014, there is now <clears throat> another uh, mm -hmm. committee set up, which is the Select Committee on Benghazi with uh, Chairman Daryl Issa. Republican from California, who will be the chairman, 
and again they're going to reopen Benghazi and this is basically um, in response to the email that was uncovered or released and the State Department and the White House are both scrambling to come up with a good talking point as to why this email was withheld. So according to Chairman Issa, the ongoing White House obstruction has repeatedly delayed and impaired effects, efforts I'm sorry, to get to the bottom of what occurred before, during, and after the terrorist attack that killed four Americans in Benghazi. So this committee is yet probably, I think, the eighth or ninth um, committee to investigate the investigation on Benghazi because still, as of 2014, almost two years later, the American people and Congress are not convinced that everything has been brought to the table in terms of what happened on September 11th, 2012 in Benghazi. So as such, um, what you just heard was Secretary Kerry, Secretary of State now, has been in fact subpoenaed for a hearing that is scheduled on May 21st. As you just heard, on May 21st, Secretary Kerry will be in Mexico and unavailable. Therefore, he is, uh, I don't know if he's ignoring, but he's certainly not going to comply with the subpoena that was issued for him to appear. So let's go back to Marie Harf and Matt Lee, and in a minute you'll hear the bombshell that's dropped. So oppose that subpoena for Secretary Rice. So what we would say is you don't get to have different rules for different administrations. And as uh, Lindsey Graham this weekend said on a Sunday show, we shouldn't play politics with Benghazi. Clearly, I think what we're seeing now uh, can be called nothing but that. Um, well, <clears throat> getting back to that in a second. Uh -huh. for, the Secretary still plans to be in Mexico on, on the 21st, which is the day of the mm -hmm. year. Does this mean, and I believe before you said that even though uh, you clearly don't like this, uh, that you are willing to work with Congress to set a time. I mean, is, he, is the Secretary willing to appear at all, well, we're whether it's under subpoena or not? Uh-huh. We're taking a look at the request, and we'll talk to the committee about what that might look like. So if they, if they change the date? Would, I, I, mean, I don't want to get ahead of what those discussions might look like. We are, well, we're whether it's under subpoena or not. Uh-huh. We're taking a look at the request, and we'll talk to the committee about what that might look like. So if they... If they change the date? Look, I, mean, I don't I, want to I, get ahead of what those discussions might look like. We are committed to working with the committee to find a resolution to this that is uh, acceptable to both sides. We were surprised when they didn't reach out to us before issuing the subpoena for exactly that reason. And as I've noted here, there have been a number of uh, Republicans who themselves, under the previous administration, said a Secretary of State should not be subpoenaed. Okay, but let's so just, let's all play by the same rules here. Okay, but just try, I mean, he is within his right, though, to make it. What, whatever he said about uh, uh, an attempt to subpoena uh, Secretary Rice back uh, in 2007, aside, mm -hmm. other than that, I mean, he's not out of bounds in issuing a subpoena. Well, he? traditionally, how the process has worked is that first you issue you issue an invitation to testify, right. and you work with the uh, official to determine when yeah. might work for someone to appear. Right. So that part of the process was just skipped over by Chairman right, Issa. Well, okay, in terms of the date, do you have reason to believe that that they issued the subpoena for a date that they knew the Secretary I don't think they knew he was going to be because okay. they didn't reach out to us first. All right. <clears throat> and what I would say, and the reason I bring up Speaker Boehner's comments here, is that why is it not okay for Secretary Rice to testify about Iraq, about going to war, about how we take America to war? Why is it not okay to issue a subpoena for her, where 4,500 Americans died, and somehow now, Surprisingly, when it's Democrats, it's okay to issue one for this secretary, who, by the way, wasn't even Secretary of State then. Well, okay, but I mean, it's still, I mean, it's within his, within Chairman Issa's uh, jurisdiction to... Many things are within someone's jurisdiction. Jurisdiction doesn't like make the, it right. You just don't... Okay, folks, I stopped the video right there, <clears throat> because that was the bombshell, and it sounds like nothing much at all. However, it does fall under judicial estoppel doctrine. Now what she's trying to establish, Marie Harf from the Department of State, is that she wants it both ways. And you can have it both ways. Precedent has been set that a secretary can in fact be subpoenaed and 
as much as they may not like it because everybody's squirming at this point, the, the, the congressional hearings and the chairman of these uh, committees are within their bounds to subpoena anybody they deem necessary to have material fact or if they're a material witness to what happened in Benghazi on September 11th, 2012. Unfortunately, uh, the administration doesn't like this right now because they are under the microscope and when they're under the microscope they say things that they probably otherwise wouldn't say. I'm actually very surprised she even said the words she just did because if you notice, I'm going to play back one more time, she said essentially just because somebody has the authority does not make it right. Well doesn't that open up a huge can of worms? We've seen this now with the BLM at Bundy Ranch, and we've seen it probably hundreds of times in recent developments and recent actions and recent inactions across the United States and abroad, where one agency, just because they may have the uh, authority in either regulation or Supreme Court rulings or actual law, does not make it right. Now, the reaction after she said that was nothing. Normally, um, Matt Lee or somebody would have tried to give her the out and clarify what she just said, but they didn't. And they didn't for a very good reason. She is using the concept of using somebody's words against them. In this case, she's using the words of um, Chairman, uh, sorry, uh, Speaker Boehner and using his words against him in this scenario of subpoena, sending out a subpoena for John Kerry. And yet, at the same time, she spit out, just because somebody has the authority to do so, does not make it right. Those words have set precedent now. Because she is an official spokes a spokesperson, she does speak for the administration, and therefore, I have a feeling we're going to see those words pop up again and again. The one for this secretary, who, by the way, wasn't even secretary of state then. Well, uh, okay, but I mean, it's still, I mean, it's within his, with, within Chairman Issa's uh, jurisdiction to... Many things are within someone's jurisdiction. Jurisdiction, it doesn't like make the, it right. You just don't like the way it was done. Well, correct? there's a number of things I don't like about it. Uh, one... Clearly. I'm going to urge everybody to watch this full briefing and keep your eyes on these briefings. Um, the administration is rattled right now, and things are being said from the spokespersons that normally would not be said. Their cages are rattled, and in terms of the First Amendment, Second, Fourth, Fifth, Tenth, I don't care which one, any one of the Bill of Rights that have been coming under attack recently by this administration, we now have <laughs> words that can be used for our protection by an intrusive government that we have set up right now. So guys, view this video again. Share this video with everybody you can uh, because I have, I have a feeling this probably will get scrubbed or somehow washed over. Uh, but it's too late. Cat's out of the bag. So. With that, have a good day, and again, I'll be looking into Benghazi as it goes on. Have a good day.